everybody, Michael here, and welcome to the first video of this exciting course all about artificial intelligence. You might have a lot of thoughts about AI right now, but just know that maybe halfway or less, or certainly by the end of this course, you're going to be probably way ahead of your colleagues and your understanding of artificial intelligence. And generally, the more you learn about artificial intelligence, the more you will find that you like it. And I think personally, the less we know about it, the less likely we are to like it, at least until it takes over the world, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyways, moving on. So let's look up for a definition of artificial intelligence. And of course, to get that definition, I asked AI what AI really is. And it says it's is the ability of a digital computer or computer controlled robot to perform tasks commonly associated with intelligent beings. And for me, that was the key, the intelligent beings part. So if you imagine it's uh, like a robot that's sitting next to you, you maybe you've seen something similar to this in a movie somewhere. To me, that's what AI is. It's this friend I have next to me. Now, right now, it might be on my iPhone or it might be on my laptop. Uh, but at some point, it'll probably be a little robot. But anyways, it's a friend that's there with me to help me along. And it's a pretty smart friend, at least as smart as probably this one of the smarter high school students that you might know. But it's getting more intelligent. And later, you'll hear about something called artificial general intelligence, AGI, where the idea is there is it is as smart as any human when it comes to interacting, except it knows kind of everything that there is to know out there. So AGI will probably come to us sometime in the next two to 10 years. Estimates are all over the place. So that could be exciting, I think. Right now, it comes in multiple form factors. So form factor that's becoming more popular, just starting to get pushed out now, is on a mobile device. I'd hold up my iPhone right now for you, but I'm staring at it as I talk to you. And so anyways, AI can be right inside of that. Uh, pretty commonly, the way people are using it now is on a laptop. That's how I use it a lot. Uh, I use the uh, mobile device on my phone just when I want to have a conversation with it. That's pretty cool. And speaking of conversations, you can do that now if you use the ChatGPT app. You can chat back and forth with it. Now, if you want to interrupt it because it can get a little long-winded, you have to tap on it. But that will change pretty soon. And I'm recording this in June of 2024. So, you know, things change about every five minutes or something like that. So I'm sure this video will be out of date pretty quickly. And so some of the things I talk about now as being in the future might be happening when you look at it. Uh, I think we'll see AI inside of headsets for sure. And then those headsets are going to shrink down to just the size of glasses. So the AI will be able to see, for example, here, what a student is reading or doing or what math problem they're working on. And then through the glasses, there's a little speaker there that can give them advice. Now, isn't this going to be cool? Because then AI will be aligned with what we want as teachers for AI to be. We don't want AI to be what we're afraid it is now, a way for students to just never have to do any work. In this case, it should be an AI developed for students and that it helps them. It's like a tutor, but it doesn't do the work for them. It's designed so not to do that. Pretty neat. That's going to be the future, I think. And, you know, I can imagine a cute little robot like this, especially for our younger students. I actually, you know, as I get older, I'd like a cute robot like that. Now, when you think of AI, it is not Alexa or Siri. I don't know about you, but Siri drives me crazy. There's going to be a new Siri. But before that, I just want you to know it's not Alexa. It's definitely different. And the difference is it's generative. So it generates its own content. And here's three companies we'll talk about in a moment that do that. So here's what generative AI means. Generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that can create new and original content, such as text, images, music, on and on and on. And it's based on something called a large language model. So for the past 10, 20 years or so, computer companies that have worked on AI have been crawling and absorbing all the data that's out there on the internet. So we know there's a lot out there, right? And then it uses all that information to help it predict what the next thing it is that it should say. So if you say, hey, I want, to have, I want you to write a poem in the voice of Dr. Seuss and talk about cars and ships, it'll take all that knowledge it has about cars and ships and the way language has been formed and the way Dr. Seuss puts language together and the way poems are put together and generate original content based on that. Now, it's super intensive. Uh, energy intensive as well. And so there's these giant server farms out there. For example, I live in central Oregon. We have a big one in Prineville for Facebook that are out there processing all of these requests that come through. So it does take a lot of energy to do it. Now, 
they'll get more efficient with it as it, time goes on, and it also will get better. So as it gets more efficient, it'll probably just absorb the same amount of energy because our requests will be more complex, or its ability to satisfy those requests will be more complex. Now, ChatGPT3, which you probably never heard of, when it came out, it had 175 billion parameters. And parameters are values that control the behavior of a system or model. So think of it as kind of options. GPT-4, and now they have 4.0 or Omni, has 100 trillion, I've heard reports as high as 173, or excuse me, one point, yeah, 173 trillion. I mean, what's the difference of, you know, that's an extra 730 billion, right? And remember, uh, 1 trillion is 1,000 billion. So you can see just graphically represented here how much more powerful chat GPT-4 is and how imagine 5, et cetera, going from there. So it's really, its growth is just phenomenal. These are the three main companies that are doing it right now. There's Anthropic, which you'll, you'll see it through Claude.ai, Gemini, which is Google, and then ChatGPT. There's another one called Copilot from Microsoft, which really just uses the data set from ChatGPT. And then you have Apple Intelligence, which is coming out in the fall of 2024, depending on when you're watching this video, maybe it's already out. And it, as of the last time we heard, it's going to be using ChatGPT as well. Now, these guys might jump back and forth. Maybe sometime Apple will switch to Google Gemini. We don't know yet. Now, here's the cost for it. Every time you make a request for AI, it costs a few cents or a few dollars, depending on how complex the request is. And you can imagine there's just zillions and zillions and zillions of these requests going out. So these companies are actually losing lots of money. But what they're trying to do is capture the market share while they can. And then later, they'll make it back in revenue just because they'll have so much of the market share. But for you, it's free. Nice. Uh, you, there is paid versions, but the good enough versions are free. And your question might be like, well, so what? What does that mean to me? I keep hearing about this, but what am I supposed to do with it? Maybe you already know, but just in case you don't, let's go forward with that a little bit. Uh, I just want to say like 10 years ago, the movie Her came out with Scarlett Johansson. This is Joaquin Phoenix here. Scarlett Johansson is the voice. And let me play just a little bit of that. It's, it's about a guy, if you haven't seen it, that falls in love with, they call it an OS operating system, but really today we'd call it AI. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Samantha. Good morning, Theodore. Good morning. You have a meeting in five minutes. You want to try getting out of bed? <laughs> You're too funny. Okay, good. I'm funny. I want to learn everything about everything. I love the way you look at the world. So, it's pretty phenomenal, the relationship that he's able to, anyway, I only saw a little bit there, that he's able to develop with his AI or OS or operating system, as they called it in the movie. And then we watch this one here from ChatGPT. This just came out in May of 2024. Uh, it's not completely available on mobile devices yet, but maybe again, it will be by the time you watch this video here, this introduction. So check this out. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? Pretty good. What's up? So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. <laughs> Gather round, Barrett. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte was a curious robot. I Always like explore. started this story, but I want a little bit more. And then it gets even better because soon AI will be able to see, if you turn on your camera, what you're doing, so working on math problems or whatever it might be, or in this case, writing. And you'll, it'll be able to relate to you, have a conversation or interact with you much in a much more interesting way because it can actually see what you're doing. And I wrote uh, one last thing I'd love if you could take a look at. Of course, I'd love to see what you wrote. Show it to me whenever you're ready. Okay, so this is what I wrote down. What do you see? Aww. Uh I see. I love ChatGPT. That's so sweet of you. Uh, it's interesting here, and you may have noticed that in the last video, this video or this voice sounds like Scarlett Johansson. She was actually quite upset about this because it is not her and she didn't give permission, but it's so flirty. So, you know, a lot of people who develop these things are what we call tech bros, like young guys like this. So, of course, they're going to make their AI flirty because that suits their interests. Let's see here what Sal Khan does when it comes to math. Again, this is using that uh, 
AI that can watch what you're doing. And imagine in the future when the students have glasses on that AI can watch what they're doing and give them assistance. So here we go. Let's check this out. Here with my son, and I'd love you to tutor him on this math problem, but don't give him the answer. You can ask questions and nudge him in the right direction, but I really want to make sure he understands it himself. And he's here in the room, so you can talk to him directly. Of course, I'd be happy to help. Let's look at the problem together. Can you first identify which sides of the triangle are the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse? relative to angle alpha. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is the angle alpha right here, right? Perfect. Carbs, correct. Yes. Now, looking at the triangle, which side do you think is the hypotenuse? Um, Remember really, I mean, the hypotenuse? I'm not totally sure. I think, I think it might be this one, but I really am not sure. This side AC. All right, so if we have artificial or generative artificial intelligence platform with over 100 trillion parameters that can do real-time conversations, see what you are doing via video, what does that mean for the future of education? So that'll give you something to think about during this course. And in many ways, it's up to you. You're going to be the leaders to come up with ways and ideas that education can use AI You'll be the first person to do that. You'll help creating the narrative and paving the way to make that happen. Because there will be, of course, like with any new technology in education, a lot of resistance. To help you get started, I've got a hundred plus ways to use artificial intelligence in the classroom. There are zillions here in this little video, for example, of things called APIs, which means that companies like Magic School and Khan Academy for Teachers, which is different than just the regular Khan Academy, and a whole zillion a bunch of others, as I, you can see here as I'm scrolling along, uh, what they do is they take uh, AI and then they create their own programs from it. So all that stuff is being developed right now. There's also some resources in the course you'll find for teachers like yourself that have listed things and ways that they've used AI that's something you'll contribute to as well yourself. So anyways, how you feeling now? Well, I hope it's great. Maybe you're super excited like this guy here. Maybe you're a little bit fearful waiting for AI to take over the world. Or maybe you have a mix of feelings like this. Uh, that's kind of more me. I tend to be pretty excited about this stuff, but, you know, I'm a tech nerd, so that's just my style. And remember, this is the least capable version of AI you will ever see. This is the worst version. Every time you use it, it's the worst version. It just gets better every day. And this course has changed. It's been going for over a year. And it's changed already a lot in one year. So it'll be fun to see what happens in the next six months to a year. So get going. Set up your account and start exploring, whether that's ChatGPT, Claude.ai, or Gemini. It doesn't really matter. All the models uh, are pretty good. Sometimes you know, one month one will be better than the other. Sometimes you jump around. But really, any of them will be good to get you started. All right, have fun and thank you.